I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So wonderful to have you join as we gather around this altar and we begin a new season today, a season of autumn, and as the seasons change outside and the leaves will change, may this be a time of change and great harvest in our own lives. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, and all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezra. At the time of the evening sacrifice, I, Ezra, rose in my wretchedness, and with cloak and mantle torn, I fell on my knees, stretching out my hands to the Lord my God. I said, My God, I am too ashamed and confounded to raise my face to you. Oh, my God, for our wicked deeds are heaping up above our heads, and our guilt reaches up to heaven. From the time of our fathers, even to this day, great has been our guilt. And for our wicked deeds, we have been delivered up, we and our kings and our priests, to the will of the kings of foreign lands, to the sword, to captivity, to pillage, and to disgrace, as, to the ca- as, as is the case today. And now, but a short time ago, mercy came to us from the Lord our God, who left us a remnant and gave us a stake in his holy place. Thus our God has brightened our eyes and given us relief in our servitude. For slaves we are, but in our servitude our God has not abandoned us. Rather, he has turned the goodwill of the kings of Persia toward us. Thus he has given us a new life, to raise again the house of our God and restore its ruins, and has granted us a fence in Judah and Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be God who lives forever. Blessed Blessed be be God God who lives forever. He scourges and then has mercy. He casts down to the depths of the netherworld, and he brings up from the great abyss. No one can escape his hand. Blessed be God who lives forever. Praise him, you children of Israel before the Gentiles. For though he was scattered, you among them, he has shown you his greatness even there. Blessed be God who lives forever. So now consider what he has done for you and praise him with full voice. Bless the Lord of righteousness and exalt the King of ages. Blessed be God who lives forever. In the land of my exile, I praise him and show his power and majesty to a sinful nation. Blessed be God who lives forever. Bless the Lord, all you his chosen ones, and may all of you praise his majesty. Celebrate days of gladness and give him praise. 
Blessed be God who lives forever. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet in testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think it's a perfect gospel to hear as we begin a new season because today, just like every day of our life, we go on a journey. And what Jesus wants us to do is sow some seeds. Sow some seeds that build up our families. Sow some seeds that build up our faith formation program here. Sow some seeds that allow God to do his work. And what I think he wants us to do is not be discouraged, but depend on him. You know, as we hear about, don't take this, don't take that, don't, you know, take anything extra. What he's saying is, I will take care of you. Don't be discouraged. Do your part in building up the kingdom, and I'll do the rest. You know, when I talk to people, people will talk about how often the world is changing. It can change very, very rapidly. It can almost seem very dark sometimes. But God's in charge. All we have is ourselves. We have ourselves to sow some seeds and God will do the rest. I think that there's um, no way of knowing the power of words that we have to people that encourage, that walk or journey with someone else that needs help when we extend graciousness to others. We don't know the power of our actions, but God does. And sometimes it's the smallest little things that we do they can change hearts and change lives and build families and build communities and build our parish and build our world. And that's what Jesus wants us to do when we go on this journey. Not to want everything immediately or want it yesterday, but be grateful for what you have right now and not think that you need anything further. When there isn't a longing for something more and more and more, and there's a contentment of what you have, I think it builds a great peace. And when you're peaceful, there's a ripple effect around you of those around you that also become peaceful. And you know what? That's free of charge. We're able to give people a smile, give people a hug, give people a welcome, give people a thank you, and they're totally free of charge. And they add no baggage to our life, nothing hard, nothing heavy, but instead it builds up a community and it builds up one soul at a time. So today we're moving into the fall harvest. Our pumpkins are around this altar now as we move into fall and it becomes a time of a new beginning. May it be a new beginning in our lives. And what Jesus sends us off, he sends us off on a journey telling us you don't need anything else, but you just need me. And let God's will be done, not our own, and the kingdom of heaven will be found. Please rise now for the intercessions. Reliant on God's mercy and his abundance in our lives, knowing that the kingdom of heaven is to be found, let us bring our prayers before him. For the church and its work, 
through all of the baptized, throughout all the continents, for you and I, may we continue the mission of those 12 that were sent out two by two. And may God strengthen every one of us as we proclaim the gospel throughout the world more by action instead of word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work to uphold justice, all of us hopefully are doing that in our own families, our own communities. We pray for better justice in our whole world. May the Holy Spirit imbue in every one of us gifts of understanding and knowledge and to tap into those confirmation gifts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to forgive themselves, to forgive others, that struggle with patience and understanding, that struggle with those around them, may God's abundant presence be with them and may they keep their patience, all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, we pray in a special way for our pair sick list, all those that grieve the loss of another. As we move into a fall, we move into a more of a darkened world where the, the time will change and we also will move into All Saints Day and All Souls Day, those seasons of change. May it be a time in which our faith community grows ever stronger and may God strengthen our commitment to spreading the gospel message one person at a time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, pray in a special way for Tom Kelly, whose funeral will be celebrated today at 1030 here. Tom and his wife Fran had five children. And if you would see those kids around their dad yesterday, they are just such a polished family. And it's such a tribute to mom and dad. And dad was somebody that um, he would be there for anybody. You need his help, he was there, not a telephone man. Um, would talk just for a few minutes on the phone. But if you needed him, he was there. He served for 58 years in our Knights of St. John. And he died on Friday with a scapular around his neck, a cross in his hand, and he waited for me to come to give him anointing of the sick. And all of his kids that came into the world were right around him when he died. So we pray for him, that's at 10.30 this morning. And we also pray for our Mass intentions today, which is Edward and Alexandria Soban, um, Ali's mom and dad, and um, another couple that, that instilled a life of faith that's been handed down. And, and actually, she's going to be doing Children's Liturgy of the Word, and she hands it down to another generation. And uh, her couple generations after her, maybe, right? And Eileen Lansdale's here to help out, too, on that. So... Um, just ask for God's grace that all of us can hand down that faith and sow those seeds. But for our Mass intentions, which is Edward and Alexandria and all the faithful departed, may God's infinite love welcome them into eternal life and may we meet them again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. And we make these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, listen to the prayers we place before you this day. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine that we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as a sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the Highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the Highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. 
Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
You've laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's a Wednesday, and so we'll pray the glorious mysteries of the rosary after Mass. I have a funeral after Mass, so Joan, if you could, if you could lead it, I'd be grateful. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.